How y'all doing? I want to welcome y'all to Strawberry Space, where we discuss transgender related topics. All right, people, it's time for some karaoke. What is she doing? So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, trans men and trans women of Strawberry Space. The topic we have today is Aretha Franklin and how Norwegian white trans activists say that her song, Natural Woman, is offensive to them. And we're going to dive into how that is affecting the not only trans community, but the black trans community. Okay. You really like it? We love it. Re, 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 to mess this up for me. So that was a site from MGM Films on respect with Jennifer Hudson as Aretha. So I'm going to explain cisgender uh, men and women of strawberry space, something called the agenda. Now, I think when you think of agenda, you think of it being like the gay agenda with, you know, bills like don't say gay in Florida with adults who are in the LGBT community training, forcing, and teaching your children about transgender and, you know, gay behavior. But that's not the agenda I'm talking about. The agenda that I'm referring to is what they're doing now towards, you know, this fake activism. The New York Post also refor recorded that it was not an actual factual place in Norwegia with other trans women that was trying to do this. It was actually for clicks and views and clouts. This attention seeking thing is to draw a wedge, instigate and stir up the pot against cisgender women and black trans women. Because notice this is culturally an African American issue, not affecting the very community that it said it was. White trans women, you know, started this and white and black gay reporters reported on this. Nobody was trans spoke out about this. No one was trans said anything about this. And no one was trans agreed to this. They even dragged poor Patty LaBelle in this. Nobody is canceling Aretha nor her music, but it is to paint a narrative that trans women, oh, we're too sensitive. Trans women, oh, you know, we have to always fight for inclusion and trans women are is equal to and better than cis women because we can pull the strings and that's simply not the case. So now let's role play, shall we? So now you're gonna have cisgender biological women in this attitude point of view as their defense. Oh my God, now listen. I'm all for equality. I have nothing against, you know, them, you know, the women, but the women that are really men. But I mean, we were here first. I mean, like, my goodness, we already have to share the bathroom with them, the sports with them. You know, now, I mean, can we have something to ourselves? Natural Woman is a song about natural women. How are you going to sing about a natural woman if you're not a natural woman? You can't cancel her. That's history. Uh, they're doing too much now. They always want everything about them. We fought for abortions. We have periods. We carry the children. They don't understand anything about that. We're the real women. And why can't they just back off? I mean, my gosh, you know, but you know, 
they get everything they want. They want favoritism. You know what I'm saying? They get, you know, anything that their little hearts desires that we can't say anything or disagree with them because if we're not, we're going to be transphobic. In scene. I'm just role playing y'all. So, but that's really how the cis and biological women feel and think when really it's it's a narrative they're trying to paint and push because those blogs that reported that, the comments are going to be off the hook. And it's simply transphobia at its finest. So I'm just here to add some insight. And, you know, some of these people might feel like I'm reaching. But if you haven't guessed, we're going to role play all through this right here. So now I'm now I give you the cisgender biological point of view. I'm going to give you the white trans point of view. These are the people that were actually starting the coalition and started all this in the first place to get trending before the editors picked it up. So the white trans point of view sounds a little something like this. All right. Now, y'all listen. Gender non-conformant, non-binaries, we have been suppressed for long enough. Now that we have the power to be in a position, it's not privilege. We're just exercising our right, freedom of speech. And now we're going to say we want to say we have Biden on our side and the U.S. Supreme Administration. We're going to go forth. We're going to go back and we're going to rewrite history because we want equality for everybody. And not just, you know, us and trans women and those who identify. We want it for all women. But if we have it for all women, we have to have a level ground. The playing field is not equal. We have to go back and we have to teach everybody that there is a new meaning. You know, you are who you say you are. X, Y, and X chromosomes don't matter. We understand science, but we want to self-identify. Aretha Franklin's song, Natural Woman, is offensive. I mean, only natural women can sing it. Is this discrimination, segregation? We're rediversing colonialism, colorism, every type of ism there is. You're separating the cisgender biological woman with the trans woman through song, and that's not okay through trans media. We have people who are committing suicide and can't figure out who they are, and now you're uplifting one set of people while tearing down another. End scene. So before I move on to the black trans point of view, I want y'all to notice the differences between people who feel like they're doing a justice service to humanity and society who are outside of the culture once those who are in the culture. Because remember, cisgender men and women, especially cisgender women of strawberry space, black trans women as well as black trans men are black as well as trans. So they come from two communities with the LGBT and and the African American. So now, girl, can you believe this crazy nonsense? These privileged people who probably don't even identify as women on a good day gonna come for our struggle, canceling the queen of soul? Are you serious? Then blaming it on us? Why are we always monolized, generalized, and stereotype? Oh, what? So one black woman does something. She represents her. One black trans woman does something. And she represents all of us. Oh, no, baby. It don't go like that. We are a triple minority. This is just mass media exercising their opinion as usual. It's entertainment. Oh, y'all. Did y'all see what y'all see on The Shave Room? On Hollywood Unlocked? Gossip in the City? They do it all the time. Let's run with this exciting lie because the truth is too boring. Now, it's bad enough that, you know, these cunts really think we're trying to be fish. Stealing our language like no shade and it's a kiki and, you know, burst, butch queen and all this and that taken from us. But, I mean, we grew up on her, too. This is a legacy. Why would people who look, dress and act like us feel like because we're one of a group of people taking up two spots attempt to extinct one of the greatest characteristics of who we are don't they see us but no we, we're taking their men right we're tricking them right we it's always something i swear what can we do damn if we do damn if we don't Nothing benefits them and, and, and everybody, you know, caters to them. They think that we're the ones being coddled. They have women's suffrage. We get it with, you know, the abortion. We get it with, you know, we'll never be able to have babies. But 
I'm sorry, does the news reporter ever ask our opinion or do they just want the man's point of view, the female's point of view, and then when they come to us, oh no, we've got all dynamics to the conversation. What about us? Why does everybody always accommodate them because they were there first? And why do we always have to appeal to their better nature and please everybody else? Where's our trans singer? What's our trans rapper? If natural woman is for the natural woman, can we have an anthem? I mean, damn. <laughs> I mean, they act like we're invisible. But you know what? We're only invisible because they refuse to see us. Black lives matter until they're gay or trans. And even sometimes the gay people throw us under the bus because they don't want to be at the lowest end of the totem pole. And now you got these white trans activists who may or may not be in Norwegian trying to speak for women in general of the trans community when they don't even know R-E-S-B-E-C-T. They don't even know half her catalog and her resume. <laughs> the black women say we want to be them and the black men murder us. Does anybody see it for us? Does anybody love us? Does anybody care about us? Or do they think that everything that we do reflects on the fact that we just wanna be them and we're trying to beat them and it's just simply an imitation. They're not gonna call out the drag queens now, but they're always gonna target us. A natural woman perpetuates multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. There's no such thing as a natural woman. The song has helped inspire acts of harm against transgender women. And they were questioned that, that there's no such thing as a, I need to read that explanation. Whatever article, whatever study, whatever it is, that there's no natural women then does that mean there's no natural men either? The post perceived by many as satire began by asserting the song is offensive to transgender people and there's no such thing as a natural woman. Free the Franklin song, natural woman perpetuates multiple harmful stereotypes. Um, the post and the groups. The trans community want to get rid of the song with the Franklin natural woman. They're saying there's a harm to their community and there's no such thing as a natural woman. Come on, man. Come on. Y'all going way too far now. Stop it. Stop it. So let me get this straight. And I know this hits close to home and I'm technically biased since I'm a black trans woman. And this is my YouTube channel. And this is where I channel a lot of my energy to the thoughts to the black trans men and women in strawberry space. You got cisgender women saying that we can't, in reference to the song, natural woman because we're not a natural woman. But you got black cisgender heterosexual men talking about trans women and how we feel in reference to the song natural woman so how can y'all talk about it but we can't you see what i said when y'all have both perspectives men are talking about this women are talking about this everyone's talking about this but i just want one question who asked the black trans woman or a white trans woman for that matter how they feel about it and the answer y'all no one no one asked because they said one group of trans people, y'all. Do y'all understand that? It's not all trans people. They think we're cherry picking, but it's the short end of the stick for me. They want us to be a punching bag, petitioning to remove it from iTunes and SoundCloud. Y'all, this is just an excuse. Last call for alcohol. Any last words of how you really feel towards the trans community? Say it loud and proud mansplaining, projecting, paraphrase. This is like the Bible. They're just going to take an article's editor rendition of how the trans community think and feel, but nobody asks us how we feel. Like the baby with cancel culture, it's not that it's an LGBT culture, but they're saying all trans women. All trans women didn't say that. What now is going to be Whitney Houston, I'm every woman next? What? <laughs> What, what is this? What have we come to? Strawberry Space, the sad thing about this is no blog with major publication 
is going to update this to clarify that this group wasn't even legit. It's just, like I said, in the um, point of view for the black trans woman, easier to run with the lie. The lie is there is no trans group. The group isn't real. The article isn't real. You just heard that the post was fake, but now it's just another ex <laughs> Y'all. It's just another excuse. Everybody wants to use trans women as the scapegoat and it's specifically black trans women as the scapegoat for all of your aggression and all of the things that you don't understand about yourself. And quite honestly, it's tired. It's old. It's trash. It's lame. It's bewildering. And quite honestly, when the girls said that they loathe you, I understand why. A lot of y'all looked at this article and said, here go the trans girls doing too much once again. Now now they trying to do away with this dead woman's legacy because it's a lot easier for y'all to believe that trans people want special privileges than it is for y'all to just accept the fact that we want to be treated like everyone. So that excerpt from the actual black trans woman that we're referring to is from Hope Giselle and the excerpts of the men sticking their nose in trans and women's business is from Tyrone Magnus and Reg the Bad Guy. But, you know, I can see trans men and women in strawberry space that these biological women don't know the definition of instigation. Are you going to love us or hate us? I mean, I'm so passionate about this because where's the allyship? This is the same thing that y'all did with Shanquilla. Remember, y'all said that she was murdered by a trans woman and you believed what you wanted to believe. You took it around with it. And then when it found out that she was not, in fact, trans but cis, oh, well, justice for Shanquilla. Listen, it doesn't matter the facts of what person, whether trans or cis, murdered her. She was murdered. You know, my condolences to the family. Well, hold up now, boo. If it never mattered that she was trans or cis, why did y'all make her out to be trans? Simple. It's just what people want to believe. They wanted to believe it was a femicide and, oh, but y'all want this and that. But then when y'all murder us, what, what, what happens then? That's what I mean, cisgender women of strawberry space, when I say the agenda. And as we move on to our final topic with Miss Knowles, I just want y'all to notice the strategic plan of it all. And it's obviously working because now you really have trans women and cisgender women going at each other. Y'all too much. Y'all too sensitive. Y'all take things too far. And then we can say, well, hold up now. It's the women's point of view. They, they, they respect the women. The women didn't feel uncomfortable. The women feel that we have an advantage. It's always them and their feelings before ours. When is society going to look at us? Y'all really think that biological women gave us the ability to get a free SRS, FFS, and implants with Medicaid? That was a man. That was President Biden. If it had been up to a biological woman, we wouldn't have anything. And then if you look at the fake, you know, Norwegian trans white group and take on their rhetoric, okay, so cancel Aretha. Let's cancel her. And we're not going to put natural woman back on the podcast until we have our own rendition of natural woman because i think of natural as being humble no makeup you know just organic but since you want to make a natural woman like a cisgender biological thing well i want my own song transgender woman i now i think everybody has seen this white trans woman I'm going to need for y'all to stand down on this one. And the reason I'm saying white trans women is because I don't want y'all to use this as currency to attack black trans women. Because black trans women are dealing with too much shit in their day-to-day -day lives to be going back to 1968 to try to figure out which Aretha Franklin song they find to be offensive or not. Every day we wake up, black trans women are trying to live. They're trying to survive. They're trying not to be murdered because they're the most murdered group of trans people in the United States. They're trying to find jobs that don't discriminate against them. And many of them are forced into sex work because jobs just simply won't hire them because of 
you guessed, you guessed it, discrimination. The only people in the trans community who are privileged enough to go back nearly five decades to figure out which Aretha Franklin song they find offensive or not are white trans women. And you wanna know what really pisses me off about this? When the power structure, the white people, and the LGBTQAI community does shit like this, they never seem to really consider how it impacts the most vulnerable people who are part of this community, which end up being the poorest and the blackest of us who are in the community. So I'm gonna need for y'all to stand down on this one because Aretha Franklin is our queen. Black trans women are bumping every Aretha Franklin song that you can think of. And if you wanna ask me what I think about the white people in the LGBT community right now after this bullshit, <sighs> nice, nice gowns, beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns, nice gowns. So our next topic, trans men and women in the strawberry space, is Beyonce backstabber Knowles. Now, I know y'all finna drag me in the comments, but listen to this analogy. So, close your eyes for a moment, trans women. Have you ever had that one friend that you were really close with that was a biological woman, and as a trans woman, it felt like she didn't judge you? She didn't care what you did and accepted you for who you are, but was either dating with, messing with, friends with, or connected in some way or affiliation with a transphobic person. Well, that is the exact definition of what Beyonce did and how she did it when she had connections with Dubai. Now, you mean to tell me a girl that only has one album, look at the screen now, hint, hint got $1 million over in the U.S., and she had to go all the way over to Dubai to get 24 to $35 million. Give me a break. Now, this is a clear example of somebody using the LGBT community as for her themed album, getting revenues and monetization from our community, and now it's that same community that if they had the same money as her to go over to Dubai, they couldn't even watch her perform because the country says that the lifestyle is forbidden. Next, you know, she will be doing music with Boozy and being overseas flying to Jamaica. She didn't even perform none of the Renaissance music while she was over there. And then I think the thing that gets me the most is now you have this poor token trans girl as the face of it all to tell TMZ to speak up on her behalf what she did and oh how she feels and oh she didn't mean to um I'm sorry what is Beyonce spoken up for our community but here you are for her because you want to check and you have to be careful, um trans women of strawberry space because notice that yes Madison opens doors and closes them. She doesn't pave the way for trans women and have a ladder for the rest of them. It's just her. It's just her. It's like, listen, I'm the trailblazer. You follow me. I'm the originator, HBIC. And it's just like, you know, you ask these publications, podcasts, groups, and everybody else in between well, can I come on, you know, your platform? You had T.S. Madison and you're LGBT friendly. And the answer is no. We did it for her and only her. And Beyonce the same way. She wanted to be the one and the only black woman entertainer performing over there with a, you know, energy like, hmm, I'm that girl. You girls can't sit with me. This is a private show. I got paid my money. You know what I'm saying? You're over here watching on TikTok in the U.S. My, you know, concert on bootleg. You're poor. You can't afford it. And, you know, I'm international. And, you know, I'm the greatest entertainer of all time since the 90s. It's just what it is. She took the bag she was a sellout and now people are outraged. So I'm going to play a rendition, a uh, snippet clip from T.S. Madison's um, when she had her interview with TMZ. Because you know they had to get someone from the actual community to speak out against her. Because you know if they didn't, it would be cisgender people talking about the LGBT community. So they had to get her to do the bidding for her. And then we're going to talk about it in just one moment.
Uh, I think she did like 90 minutes. Uh, this was at the opening of the new Atlantis Resort in Dubai. Yes. And the show now has, is, is, there's a rift now. Really? For a Beyonce concert? Between Beyonce fans. Wow. You would think everyone would be united in this. Right. But this is uh, great, right? This all has to do with the fact that this concert was in Dubai. As we told you mm. uh, last week, she got $24 million for this concert. Wow. So the Atlantis Resort just opened up the bank and said, here you go. <laughs> all um, the money. The problem is that she performed, like we said, this was in Dubai. Right. And, um, you know, the LGBTQ community uh, has felt uh, very close to Beyonce even before the Renaissance right. album. But she dedicated that album uh, to her uncle who had passed away, who was gay. Yeah. And a lot of people felt um, a well, much closer affinity for right, Beyonce right. in the community. It, right. In so, Dubai. Right. United Arab Emirates. That's not necessarily... Right. There is no tolerance for gay people. Right, right. And country, so right. why perform in Dubai? And that is the rift that's developed here. People feel that Beyonce just took a big paycheck um, and they wish she had not done this concert right. there. So joining us right now to talk about this rift, uh, someone who knows Beyonce very well. In fact, uh, you heard T.S. Madison sampled on the Renaissance album, um, we've spoken to her before, and she's joining us right now to talk about this. Madison, welcome back to TMZ Live. Hi, baby. How are you doing? Who, who, mad, who mad at Beyonce? Who? <laughs> uh, I've heard, uh, listen, we were talking about it this morning in our other uh, meeting, and there are a lot of fans who just feel like she, uh, the word that was used was that she sold out. That's the phrase people are using. Um, what is your take on this uh, and that the LGBTQ community, do they have a right to be upset with her here? I want to say the right thing, Charles, because okay. people go people go to Dubai for many different reasons. And a lot of LGBTQIA people go to Dubai for a lot of those reasons. Right. Okay. And, you know, Beyonce went there for some of those same reasons. She went there to make her money. Everybody that loves Beyonce and everybody that knows Beyonce knows that Beyonce loves loves the community and and not just loves the community. She dedicated an entire album, which is like the album of the year and, you know, to her fans, to the people that she loved. So I personally saw it as she went and got her bag. She went and got paid. But doesn't that, doesn't that, I mean, you're right, but then that does sound like it's kind of the definition of selling out. I wouldn't say she sold out because if she, if she, she, she loves her fans, but Tell me, I want to ask any one of those folks over there that if if they were given 30, 24 million, I heard it was 35 mm -hmm. million. That's what I heard. It was 35 it, it, yeah, million. I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it was that. Um, right. I, any one of those girls will put on their wig, right. hair, makeup, lashes and run right over there to the Atlantis Hotel and gather their 35 million dollars and come right on back home. And, 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 and it's still the same love for her fans. You know, we all know what what the those countries give. We know this already. It's easy to turn down the $24 million check when it's not or, coming or to, to say, you. Or to right? say you would turn right. it down. See, that's why God doesn't like ugly. Imagine paying $24 million to watch somebody limp because she had leg surgery and she couldn't really perform to her highest capability. So now you got the man that was talking about Rihanna ain't no Beyonce, but now she's in a country getting scattered on and you have cozy correspondent Madison taking up for her. Now, come on now. I mean, this is really double-sided. If I had a homegirl that um, she knew I was friends with a girl who didn't like her, that bitch would fight me and her. I mean, she could have negotiated this money somewhere else, maybe in the U.S., and it wouldn't be no problem with it. Furthermore, wasn't this the same Renaissance album that spoke out and had her team say something when Nas robbed Khalees of her money on the album with milkshakes and she removed that sample off? But she couldn't say nothing about the LGBT community, but she could take our money. Girl, pay it. Pay it, pay it, pay it. Well, Beyonce did have some drama with the artist Khalees. Now, Khalees was very upset that Beyonce sampled her song Milkshake. In my last video, I said that she sampled Khalees' song Get Along With You, but it was actually Milkshake. And you could hear towards the end of the song Energy that her vocals were actually imitated. You could kind of hear that la 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 sound. It was very similar to Khalees' la 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 la. 
So in conclusion, trans men and women in strawberry space, stop supporting companies, people, productions, and businesses that don't support you. I know this is, you know, a very different controversial video because usually I just think the facts and not my opinion, but I had to on this one. So this has been Strawberry Space and thank you.